please open your Bibles this morning to the book of Revelation, chapter 4. You know, every time we come together, it should be a transformational gathering. It should be. It should be. Every time. Every time you and I come together, something should happen to us. In our mind, in our hearts, in our emotions, and in our bodies. Reach up and grab that every time. Every time. Every time. And whether or not that happens is really up to us. It's already, it, it's up to us. See, God's already given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. God desires, God longs to help you. God wants to help you. Tell your neighbor, God wants to help you. He really does. Not only does God want to help you, but he wants to reveal himself to you in ways that you never thought possible. God really wants you to know him. I mean, that's what it's all about, isn't it? That, that's why God created us. God would come down in the cool of the day, and he would walk with his man, Adam, and his wife. And they would fellowship and have intimacy together. Now, who, whoever thought such a thing, that Almighty God, the God of all creation, the God that upholds all things by the word of his power, would create a man, breathe into him the breath of life, and then say to him, I want you to be one with me. I want you to be one with me. You know, there's a lot of things in this life that excite us when it comes to our flesh and our emotions. But if we would really see, and I hope by the Holy Ghost that you can begin to see this more clearly after today, that if we would really, really, really just have a fraction of a revelation of God's plan for you and I, it would excite us beyond words. We would become so enthralled and so obsessed and so consumed by God that all we would have time is for him. But God's got to give us that understanding. God's got to give us that revelation because we, we have an enemy called the devil. And the devil's number one purpose when he came to this earth was to separate man from God. Because he had some concept of what God had planned for man. Now, the, the scripture says in the Old and the New, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither entered into the heart of man those things which God has prepared for them that love him. But then, if you go a little bit deeper, but it says the Spirit of God has revealed them to us, yea, even the deep things of God. So only the Spirit of God can open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to the reality of God's plan for our creation. You're not a mistake. You're not an accident. If you were even conceived out of wedlock or uh, however it happened, God knew you were going to exist before you ever came into existence. Every time we get together, I'm telling you, I am convinced that we ought to be having encounters with God. Every time. And, 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 that, and that can cover such a wide scope, and we want to look at that this morning. But uh, I told you uh, last year, just a week ago, that in my heart of hearts, the theme for this year was the book of Acts, Reborn. Now, the word of God says that delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. If there's anything the, the world needs right now, it needs another visitation from heaven. Desperately. You may not even know it. The greatest need you have in your life right now is a visitation from heaven. And because we've not had very many of them. You don't know what you're doing without. You know, we as Americans, we, we really are spoiled with technology and, and with wealth. You know, you may not think you're wealthy, but when I used to go to the Philippines, I'd go way back into the bushes. And if, if, if in that village with mud streets, you had a motorcycle, you were considered wealthy. See, when I would over there, go over there, I, I, I would miss the conveniences I had here. 
air conditioning, electricity, grocery stores. I mean, I would miss it because over here, it's just natural, okay? But over there, they had no idea what they were missing, and so they didn't long for it. And I would tell those Filipino pastors, whatever you do, don't visit America, because if you do, you'll never be satisfied with going back to your nation, because you will experience more in one day in this nation than you did in your whole lifetime over there. Well, listen, the, 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 the body of Christ doesn't realize what it's missing. Because we've not experienced in our generation what they did in the book of Acts. Oh, don't misunderstand me. We've had a little bit of it. We've had a little touch of heaven, a little taste of heaven, a, li a little bit uh, of God's manifested presence, God's manifested power, God's manifested glory, but nothing at all compared to what they experienced in the book of Acts. Now, there's really no reason why we can't have it. Reach up and grab it. There is no reason why we cannot have all that they had and even more. <laughs> If we want it, you got to want it. You got to want it more than anything. Want to what? Want to know God. Want to walk in the fullness of the Spirit. You were created to walk in the fullness of the Spirit. I hope by the grace of God this morning, I can just whet your appetite and, 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 and maybe kind of give you a glimpse of where we're headed. Matter of fact, let's take a, a glimpse at where we're headed. How, how about if we do that? We can look into the future. Revelation chapter 4. And John was in prayer on the Lord's day, and he was in the spirit. In verse 2, notice, and immediately I was in the spirit. Now, when, when you begin to move and flow and function and operate, even speak and minister in the spirit, you're in a completely different world. A world that those in the flesh cannot understand. I'll give you an example. You know, Gehazi said to Elijah, oh, we're surrounded, we're surrounded by the enemy. And Elijah says, oh, no, no, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And, of course, Gehazi looked at him like he had lost his mind. Oh, yeah, right. And then what did Elijah pray? He said, Lord, open his eyes. I pray that this morning that God would open our eyes. He would open up the eyes of our understanding that we might know the hope of our calling and the riches of our glory of our inheritance in Christ and the exceeding greatness, the exceeding greatness of his power, say power, the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in heaven, but also on earth, that name of Jesus. <laughs> I just quoted myself happy. <laughs> Look at what it says here. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold... Behold, what did he see when he's in the spirit? He said, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. You almost have to read this in another translation to really grasp these precious gems. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are seven spirits of God. Now as we read this, it, it, it's so far beyond our comprehension that we, we, we can't even imagine it. But I'm telling you, if you... If you could have been there with John that day in the spirit, it would have absolutely been beyond, beyond your understanding. So, so far beyond, so far beyond understanding. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like under crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the fourth, 
four, four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, they, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God. Notice the word, almighty. Almighty. What, what do you mean, almighty? All powerful. Everything about God is powerful. Now listen to this. I'm telling you everything about God is ultimate power. Limitless power. Never ending, unimaginable power. Well, well Pastor, what's so important about power? Well, for, first of all, we, years ago the Lord spoke to me and as I was seeking his face and he said to me, he said, son, he said, my, my power is all around you. I said, what? He said, my power is all around you. I said, Lord, what, what do you mean by that? He said, I uphold all things by the word of my power, and everything I've created is full of power. Everything I've created is full of power because that's what I am. I'm power. I'm pure. I'm almighty God. Pure power. You know, you, you think about Genesis chapter 1, and 11 times God said in one, and listen, God said in Genesis 1, God said, let there be. Eleven times, and every time God spoke, it came into creation. On the fourth day, he said, let there be stars in the firmament above. And, 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 and if you study that, and I've talked a little bit about it, that as far as we can tell with the technology we have, they now estimate that there is over two trillion galaxies in the heavens above. Two trillion I, I, I can't even comprehend a billion, let alone a trillion. I, I think a, a trillion is a, a thousand billion. So can you imagine that? There's two trillion galaxies. And in each one of those galaxies, they think there's probably up to 400 billion stars. In each galaxy, 400 billion stars in each galaxy with up to 10 planets around each one of those stars. And God said, let there be stars in the firmament in the heavens above. And it was done. See, be, because we, we can't comprehend this kind of power as, as people. So what happens? The carnal mind comes along and says, oh, there was a great explosion. And there was. There was a great explosion. You know what it was? God said. God said. And, and, and you know, and, and throughout the scriptures, there is a revelation of the power, the almightiness, the greatness, the, the, the unlimited ability of God throughout the scriptures. And in Genesis 1, we see God's unlimited ability. Now, we really have no idea. All we know is we can tell that this is how big our universe is. It could be a hundred times bigger than that, but we can't, we can't comprehend it. it. It's like we're an ant, an ant on the back of an elephant. We really can't, our minds can't comprehend it. So the human mind, it, it, tries to, it tries to come to a place that says, well, no, 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 this is how everything was created because our minds cannot comprehend that there is an almighty creator who spoke and it came to pass. Now, what's hard for us to comprehend is this God, and, and, and matter of fact, every time the Lord begins to speak to me on a certain subject because Really, 99% of the time when I speak on a subject, it's because God's been quickening my heart. He's been speaking to my heart. He's been revealing himself to me as I seek him. If you seek him, you will find him. Yes. Yes. It says, then the wicked seek not the Lord. That's what God calls wicked. The wicked seek not the Lord. But he said, I'm not far from any one of you. He said, call on to me. And I will answer you. <laughs> Call on to me, I will answer you. So, yes, last night, uh, our, our little granddaughter, Serafina, she was listening to a song that my wife and daughter were playing, something about run, 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 run. 
So she comes into my office, and I'm trying to get ready for the night, and, she, and, and, and in Chinese, my, my name is, is for grandpa's Ye Ye. And she comes into my office, and she starts yelling at me, Ye Ye, run! Ye Ye, run! Ye Ye, run! And she grabs me at the hand, and so she's running, and I'm running after her. Around, we got kind of like a, a circle. If you go through our foyer, through the laundry room, through our family room, through the kitchen, and back towards my office, yay, yay, run. And so I, I, I ran with her about five, six times, and then I snuck away and sat down in my office, and she came back in again, and she said, yay, yay, run, yay, yay, run. And so here I go again. It must have happened ten times. <laughs> yay, yay, run. She called on to her grandpa, and her grandpa came running. You call on to Daddy, Abba Father, and he will come running. But let me tell you something. She wasn't half-hearted. She meant it. She was for real. And, and when I said, no, no, I, I, need, I need to study. No, no, yay, yay. No, no, yay, yay. Come. She's learning to speak. Yay, yay, you come. Yay, yay, come. Yay, yay, come. She's staring at me now. Yay, yay, come. And guess what? I couldn't help but go. Listen. You cry out to God, and he will respond. If you're sincere. See, she wouldn't, she wouldn't let go. She's just like the woman who, who went to the unjust judge. She, she won't let go. See, take a hold of God for whatever you're believing for that's in line with his will and his word, and don't let go. And he will respond. You know, when, when I was a young boy, our, our thing in those days, I, I don't know, I guess today is the newest uh, uh, Apple phone or iPhone or Apple, the newest computer, whatever. When I was a kid growing up, remember guys, it was, it was cars and, and horsepower in your car, you know, and, I, uh, and you know, so that still kind of excites me a little bit. You know, like if somebody comes on and says, praise God, my engine is a 70 horsepower, you know, Volkswagen, we go, okay. It don't excite us guys, does it? But if Tommy says, I've got a 400 horsepower in my truck, you go, whoa, yeah, I've got a 450 horsepower. <laughs> you know, for men, that kind of excites us, you know, horsepower, you know. And, and so I, I discovered, I, I thought, well, what's the largest engine ever built? And do you know, guys, there's a 107,000 horsepower engine they have in Europe? 107,000 horsepower. I go, whoa. See, and we use horsepower as a, as a symbol of power. There's something about the power, about power. You know, and I looked up, you know, and, and did you know that a, a lightning bolt, when, 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 and how many have ever seen lightning in the heavens? You know, we're all worried about uh, natural resources, natural resources. Listen, get off of it. It is unlimited. The resources that God put in the earth, he ain't going to create new resources during a thousand year reign. We're going to use the resources that God has given to us. If we could just tap into the lightning bolts alone, we'd have more energy than we would know what to do with. A lightning bolt alone has anywhere from 400,000 to a billion volts per lightning strike. I mean, four billion volts in a lightning strike. And they figure there's almost 400 million lightning bolts a year across the earth. There is no lack of power. Everything God created is full of power. You think about wood. We're heating this building right now. It, 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 with, with natural resources, we're heating with a boiler outside. That, that hard piece of wood, when it meets the right condition, the energy that is wrapped up in that wood is released and creates heat, creates fire. You know, the Bible says God is a consuming fire. God is a consuming fire. All of the stars he created... They're, they're like a speck of dust next to, the, 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 uh, like one grain of sand next to all the grains of sand on the seashore next to God. And God one day says, let there be suns. You know, we're like 73,000 million, we're 73 million miles from the sun. They said if the earth was to move just by 
five million miles closer to the sun, we would burn up. And that sun in the heavens is this one small sun. They, they see in the universe, there are stars that are 100,000 times bigger than our sun. 100,000 times. You mean you could put our sun in a hundred thousands of our suns into one of those suns. And God said, let there be stars. How powerful is God? Can you understand why God thinks it's so ridiculous that we don't trust him? It's so insane. And really, it's, 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 it's really wicked that we don't seek him. But he said, if you seek me, you'll find me. <laughs> the God of all creation. The God who made all things. See, what the devil's trying to do is he's trying to separate us from God. And listen, from God's power. I, I don't know if you know this. It's all about power. It really is. Why do you think Lucifer rose up against God? Because he wanted God's power power he's seen it lucifer seen it he's seen the power of god he's seen the authority of god he was there when god said let there be he saw it and he he said i want that power it wasn't his to have i said do you know when you take authority and power that's not yours it's actually called usurping authority did you know that all authority is under God? Did you know Jesus was God's manifested power and authority in the earth? That's who Jesus is. It says Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Jesus was God's manifested power in the earth. You know, I know Pastor Pete was talking about grace and in the midst of, 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 of my, because my, I'm on a journey. Every time I study a certain subject, and every, actually that's what all my books are. You say, how do these books happen, Pastor Mike? Over 200 of them. I went on a journey. I had a thought, I had an idea, a creative idea. And I began a journey, and I began to study, and I began to look, and I began to inspect my life, and I began to say, Has this, what, where, hey, where is this in my life? And, and, and so I'm on a brand new journey, and you know, I've written a lot of meditation books, and I believe the Lord has me do it, because we're getting ready for a mighty outpouring of God's power. You know what the glory of God is? The glory of God is the manifested power of His presence in your meetings. That's what glory is. Glory is God's manifested presence in your life. The power of God. And so I, I did one on the knowledge of God. Meditation, I did one on the fear of the Lord. That's one of the newest ones. And now I'm writing a brand new meditation book on the power of God. Why would you do that, Pastor Mike? Because as you and I take a hold of the revelation of the truth of the scriptures... Within that is what releases God to move on your behalf. That's right. The amount of the wisdom or the word or the truth you have in you is what determines to what extent God can move in your life in that area. And we, we, we because we're, we're, we're a society that is so spoiled by power, I don't know if we appreciate it. Right now, this building is being powered by electricity. Right now, the lights we're enjoying, the audio coming over, the, the video technology, uh, the, 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 the fans on, 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 on these uh, boiler, boiler heating system. Right now, we're enjoying that power. There's power. Do you know the Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue? You know, way back when we went to war with Japan and Germany, and uh, Hitler had begun to create what we call a, a, a nuclear bomb, an atomic bomb. And actually, it's not a nuclear bomb, it's an atomic bomb. And uh, there's a difference between nuclear bombs. Nuclear bombs are a thousand times more powerful than atomic bombs. But when we dropped a bomb on Hiroshima, listen to this, they dropped plutonium a hundred and... Two pounds of plutonium. That's what was in that bomb. What we, the bomb that we dropped on Hiroshima, when, when that bomb went off, 
And, and what they did is they, they broke down the molecular structure, what we call a, a fusion or fission, that, 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 that there was within that metal, in the plutonium, or a, actually that was uranium, in uranium, now they use the plutonium, but in uranium, there is energy locked up. If you would have had like a block of uranium, 102 pounds, there was power in that, but you couldn't tell there was power in it because something had to happen. There was power in that uranium because everything God created is full of power because God is power. He's all powerful. God is all powerful. And Lucifer wanted that power. But it wasn't his to have. Do you know who God's given that power to? To his people. We're going to talk why we're not walking in it. But God's given that power to you. He created you to walk in his power. Did you know that? Under his power, under his authority. The centurion, he said to Jesus, because he had a servant that was sick, and Jesus is coming to heal the servant. And the servant and this centurion, had, he had great faith, because great faith was simply knowledge. Great faith comes from knowledge. In your heart, not in your head. And he said this, he said, Lord, don't come to my house, for I'm not worthy for you to come into my house. He had a revelation that a centurion to a Jewish man who were conquered by the Romans said, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. I'm not worthy of it. He said, listen to this. He said, for I'm a man under authority, with authority. Now, this morning, I'm just scratching the surface. I'm just, it's not even the tip of the iceberg. I just, it's just a sliver of, of the reality of what God has available for us in this world. Remember, Jesus said, I give unto you power. I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions on over all, over all, over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. <laughs> well, pastor, I just don't know if I believe that. There's the problem. We don't believe it. I mean, God's power is all around us. It's all around us. It's in our body. So he says, speak the word only. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. Did you know that uh, J really Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem, didn't he? I don't want you to leave Jerusalem. He said you need to be endued with power from on high. You need my power. He said without me you can do nothing. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. 95% of the church is convinced today they don't need the power of God. They, 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 they need, you know, the early church, oh, I love worship. I like to worship God. Techno I, I'm, you know, I use technology big time, you know, and um, I like, I use technology to get, right now we're getting the word of God out, right now. But I, I, I look in the, old, in the book of Acts, in the Old Covenant, I look at even people all the way up into uh, basic electricity was learned how to... See, the power was already always here. We just didn't know how to tap into it. See, all of God's power is available for you. For you. You just don't know how to tap into it. <laughs> That's all there is to it. You don't have to create power. It's already here. And so he said, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Jesus looked at that man, he, he was amazed. He said, whoa, in, in our term, whoa, I have not found such great faith. Faith in what? The power of God. In who God is, because God is power. God is a consuming fire. God is almighty. There is nothing 
impossible with God. I said nothing. Now, I, 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 let me clarify that. Uh, there's no shadow of turning in him. It's impossible for God to be tempted. Hallelujah. Did you know when you leave this earth, it will be impossible for you ever to be tempted or tested or tried again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never be tempted, tested, or tried again. But Jesus came to manifest that power. Why? Because it says, you know of Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good in healing all who were oppressed of the devil. You know of Jesus of Nazareth how God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. Power. By my spirit. He anointed him. The word anointed means to be equipped, to be enabled, to be empowered. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's enabled me. He's empowered me. He's equipped me to what? To preach the gospel. How many of you know, to, if you're really going to preach the gospel, the everlasting gospel, a gospel that is full of power, full of life, full of deliverance, full of healing, full of freedom, full, full. <laughs> see, but, but there's some who won't comprehend this, but see, uh, I, I have a rheostat I bought for one of our fan units. I, I didn't install it. I was going to bring it this morning. I forgot. How many know what a rheostat is? You use them on their fan controls. They're, they're, they're a little box, and they, they have a dial, and you can turn them, and you can turn that power up or turn it down because coming through your electrical wires is 120 volts with maybe that fan requires one amp. Well, the ones I got have five amps. Now, five amps ain't nothing, okay? Really, every lightning bolt, they say, has at least 30,000 amps. There it is, and there it's gone. 30,000 amps. Boom! And it happens over 4 million times a year, and we're worried about energy. Worried about energy. <laughs> and all the power there is is in God. Matter of fact, God is omnipresent. He's all-knowing. And he's omnipotent. How many know what omnipotent means? It means he's all powerful. Yes, yes, yes. And the devil wanted that. And that's why he came to the earth because he said, well, maybe I can't get God's power and God's authority, but I can trick the man because God gave Adam and his wife power and authority over nature. Over this earth. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was being tempted of the devil, see, the devil knew that Jesus, after he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, had the power to turn rocks into bread. Otherwise, he would not have said, if you be the Son of God, turn these rocks. You know, if the devil said that to me, I'd laugh at him and say, you're stupid. What do you mean, what do you mean, if, if you say who you are, turn this rock into bread? I said, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. But Jesus could have. He knew that Jesus had power. Unlimited power. But see, the only thing is that Jesus, and, and, and I wrote something up. I put it on the internet last night. I'll read that before we close this morning, Lord willing. But, but Jesus, he operated under the authority of his father. So what he did, he only did with the power and the authority he had as the Father led him. Now what happens to us, we, get, we begin to operate a little bit. Remember he said, now don't leave Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. For in words, the church, he said, is established upon the foundation of the power of God. It's not based on programs. It's not based on buildings. It's not based on good worship teams. It's not based on technology. The kingdom of God, the, the church, the body, the bride, we are built upon the foundation of God's power. You know, if you and I are in heaven, you know why God gives you glorified bodies? Right now, the saints in heaven, they, they don't have a glorified body. They're, they're, they're soul spirit beings. That's what they are. They're soul and spirits. 
But the day will come when God will, he said, this, this mortal would put on immortality and this corrupted will put on incorruption because you and I, if we were to look upon God in our physical flesh and he said to Moses, Moses says, Lord, show me, show me. He said, you can't, you can't look at me. If you looked at me in the face, you would fall dead. Even in the spirit, John, in Revelation, in chapter 1, he said, I, 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 he, saw, he saw Christ in his glorified form, and he says he fell as a dead man. Boom, he fell as a dead man. I remember back in uh, 1975, been saved for almost three months, and one night I'm just crying out to God alone this time in my barracks, crying out to God. Just, I just want to know you, God. I just want to know you. I just want to know you. And all of a sudden, the room I was in was filled with such power that the hair in the back of my neck, and I was standing, I fell on my knees, and a portal to me, it was real, opened up, and an angelic being stepped in. Now, the minute he stepped in, I fell as a dead man. Boom, I hit the floor. And then his booming voice says, stand upon thy feet, son of man. And he grabbed me and picked me up like I was a feather. And he took me through that porthole, and I went into heaven. And when I, and you can read it in my book, and I had not even read the book of Revelation yet, where there was a sea, there was a sea of glass. Looked like glass. I found myself on that sea of glass, and I saw, I was in the spirit, I saw the throne of God from a far distance. I mean, far, I can't tell you how far away. Uh, I mean, I didn't need binoculars, but it was from a far away away. And as I began to walk towards the throne, and I began to see what you see in the book of Revelation, I must have been, I don't know, I could have been 30, 40, 50, 100 miles away from the throne when all of a sudden I fell as a dead man. The glory, the power, the reality of God was so, so tangible. And then at that moment, the voice of God began to speak to me. And as his voice spoke to me, every word was like a lightning bolt that hit my body. And my, every atom of my body would scatter throughout the universe. And it come back together. Boom. Boom. And this seemed to go on for hours. Boom. Boom. And then it was done. And I was back on the earth. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what was that about? He said, I have released in you words that are not permitted to be released on this side of heaven into the proper time. See, I have great excitement. I believe the church is once again going to come back into the power and the glory of God. You know what grace is? Grace is God's divine power at work in you. That's what it is. Grace is the power of God manifested in your flesh. It was the grace of God that delivered me instantly from the drugs, the alcohol, the pornography, the rock music, the cussing, the swearing. It was the grace of God when you were born again. You were born of the Spirit. For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. <laughs> Even as many that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of the mind or the emotions, but of God, were born again. Being born again of what? The incorruptible word of the seed of life. The word. He upholds all things by the power of his word. We know there's power in the Father. There's power in the Son. There's power in the Holy Ghost. Because he said, you will be endued with power from on high. Power. Power. Every when, you, when you got healed, how many of you experienced healing in your body? That was the power of God. I remember years ago, I could tell you story after story. Sister Vi Stewart, who just went to be home with the whole Lord, I think, last year. And she was one of our teachers. And, and this was back probably almost 20 years ago. She ended up in the Gettysburg Hospital with major heart problems. And I went up there to the third floor, walked in. She was there by herself, all this equipment hooked up to her. And, and uh, I said, Sister Vi, what's going on? Well, they told me thus and thus and thus. I said, God, by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit, I said, God's going to give you a new heart. Really? I said, yeah, God's going to give you a new heart right now. Well, why did God move on you to pray 
and command a new heart to come when you haven't, you haven't seen that happen to everybody because I'm not always walking where that place of power is. There is a place of power. It's in the spirit. It's, it's when you've taken authority over your flesh. Yeah, uh, Paul said in Romans, we have power over sin. Did you know that? But the church has become so powerless, they said, well, God understands you sin. No, no, he's given you power over sin. Over all flesh. He's, Jesus said, I have power. And he, the, the power of God, which is Jesus, now lives in me. The Holy Ghost lives in me. And the Father is in me. The three in one, I'm a powerhouse filled with the power of God. Of course, now I'm just like that rheostat. And all that rheostat does is you couldn't put it on setting one, two, three, four, seven. And when you turn it up all the way, all the power that's available coming through your electric wires of your house will come, come, come busting through that rheostat. Listen, you're like a rheostat. And the numbers are infinite. And, and it begins with zero power to point one. You can go up to 1, 1 1.2, 5. There's no end. Jesus had the spirit without measure, the spirit of power, because he had the word. In the beginning was the word, and it says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What do you think Jesus did for those three and a half years? What was he giving those people? He gave them authority. He gave them power. He said, go cast out devils. Go heal the sick. I give you power over all sickness and disease. That's what he said. And then he gave them the word for three and a half years. He just crammed the truth in them 24 hours a day because he was the word. And in three and a half years when the day of Pentecost was come they were ready <laughs> they were ready to step into the fullness of God's power oh we need the power to be manifested you don't work up power remember the prophets of Baal they're trying to work up the power of Baal Screaming, yelling. You know, people actually think that. They think if we worship long enough, if we pray long enough, if we cry out long enough, God will show up. That's not the answer to power. You've already got to be in that place of power. And then when you speak, it happens. That's the power of God on tiny. It is. It's the power of God. The power of God, when it comes, it'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It'll make you shout. It'll make you run. It'll make you fall to the floor and to shake uh, like, like, like a bowl of soup on an out-of-balance wash machine. See, people say they want, they, 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 they want the power of God, but have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. See, people, I don't blame them. People are afraid of the power of God. Yeah, you know, it's just like in the natural. You got a big, big old uh, uh, semi truck out on the road and it's going by, and when you step away, because that's power, isn't it? That big old, that big, uh, so we got truck drivers in here. You know what I'm talking about? Big old 18 wheelers. And I watch some of these videos. People driving cars are stupid. I watch them. They'll pull right in front of a big old semi truck, not knowing they got 80,000 pounds of weight, and there's no way they can stop, and they squash them like a bug. And it's not the truck driver's fault. It's the person driving the truck. The car has no lick of brains of understanding what they're dealing with. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. He's all powerful. So here they, they, they had the, the uranium when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. And thank God, only out of the 120 pounds of uranium, or 104 pounds, only about 24 pounds released their energy. 24 pounds. Probably the same size as the turkey you put in your oven. That 24 pounds of uranium, when they released the energy of a, a block of, 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 of metal, completely destroyed 
within a two mile radius everything there was, including over 80,000 people. That's nothing, that's, that's, can you imagine the power that God has? Now let me just, as we get ready to close here, I want to show you, everything that comes out of God is power, everything. Everything. And, and that's why sometimes you'll find somebody who will tap into one scripture and all of a sudden they experience prosperity, success. I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you an example. What happened? <laughs> Pastor, I don't believe that's the power of God. Oh, yes, it is the power of God. Yes, it is. I, I've been in meetings where the power of God was so manifested, everybody fell out of their chairs and could not move for two and a half hours. Could not, babies did not cry for two and a half hours. And I made a big mistake. I said, they don't want it. They say they want the power of God. They want the glory of God. They want the presence of God. But when God's power comes in, all of a sudden, they, and I don't blame him because Adam and his wife, because God is power. And God was walking in the cool of the day. And they heard his voice. And the Bible says, and the voice of God is power. It's power. Jesus said, it's the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profit nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Did you know that John Wesley, he didn't know what he was doing. They didn't have worship teams. Uh, Jesus didn't have worship teams. And yet it's raw power. And, 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 and John, John, uh, John Wesley said, now listen, because he couldn't preach it in churches. They didn't want the power of God in the churches. They didn't want convicting power. Power that makes you repent. Makes you get right. That's what saved me was the convicting power of God. It was the power of God came on me in that Matthew 1975, February 18th, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The power of God, I know it was the power of God. The power of God came on me and I knew I was going to hell. I deserved hell, belong in hell. And what man could never, you could have sat me down with psychiatrists after psychiatrists in those days. They didn't give us drugs to deal with being manic depressed and, 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 and the suicidal and, and double minded. Now today they just dump all these things into people and it makes it worse because what they really need is the power of God. When you lay your hand, so I laid my hand on Sister Vi. I commanded her to have a new heart. And then I turned around, walked out, went to the elevator, went down. Later that day, Sister Vi called me up. Pastor Mike, Pastor Mike. I said, yes, Vi. He did it, he did it. I said, what? He gave me a new heart. He said, right after you walked out, all of my equipment began to go crazy. Buzzers are going off. Said, the doctors come running in and said, what's wrong? She said, don't worry. I just got a new heart. They said, yeah, right. No, I got a new heart. Well, how, how'd you get a new heart? My pastor prayed for me. Oh, yeah. And they got to examining, and guess what? She had a brand new heart. Good, and for the next 20-some years, she never had a problem. I don't know what she went home to be with the Lord with. She was getting up there in years. But it was the power of God. We're born of power. You're born of the Spirit. You're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Well, Pastor Mike, why don't, why don't we experience it? Why don't we experience the power of God? Well, I, I wrote this up. Why Jesus walked in a total power and authority of his Father, but we are not. Why are we not walking in a total power and authority of Christ? Because we're still children. We're still children. We're born again. We, we are his seed, but we're babies in our spiritual walk. Your natural age, even how many years you've been born again, doesn't determine your maturity. Something must happen in your heart. There must be a shift in your heart, a change in your heart. Something's got to happen in, they say, it, your ticker in you. See, God wants his power, his authority to be in you. He said, out of your belly will flow Rivers of living water, power. Out of your belly will flow power, just power. Power to heal, power to deliver, power to set free, power to break, to stop. Remember, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's the same power that God has in us to destroy the works of the devil. 
power to speak to nature. Donnie will tell you this. Donnie was here that day. We were up on the roof and there was a terrible storm coming, wasn't there? And it was lightning and black clouds and we had all this loose sheet metal up there. And, and, and one guy, guy came to me and said, Pastor, you were there, Howard, weren't you? And said, what are we going to do, Pastor? I said, we're going to speak to that. And it was in my heart. I said, point your finger at the storm. And this is what came out of my mouth. We, in the name of Jesus, split down the middle. No wind or no rain would hit us. And we were done. And we all turned our back on that storm. And we went to working. Next thing I know, I'm hearing it. And it just boom, 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 thunder, lightning. Rawr. And all of a sudden, somebody tapped me on their shoulder and said, look at Pastor, look. And we looked, and the storm literally did what we told it to do. It split. And it went around us. And it came back together on the other side of the building. That's the power of God. Listen, it's your inheritance. Not just the pastor, not just the apostle, not just the prophet. Not, and see, these guys begin to experience a little bit of power of God, and it goes through their head. Next thing you know, they, they, they're living uppity. They're dressing the best, driving the best, living in the best, enjoying the best. What's wrong with that, Pastor Mike? The early church leaders never did it. Smith Wigglesworth, after he got notoriety, he ended up living in the same house he was in before he ever got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Never changed his lifestyle. It never went to his head. But it goes to our head. And guess what happens? It begins to restrict the glory and the power. And now, I'm not, I'm not picking on Oral Roberts or anybody because this happened to me. Oral Roberts at one time moved in the power of God. I heard I was at a meeting and this... Uh, Professor was there who was an atheist at a full gospel businessman's meeting. I don't know if you were there, Wayne, when this guy was there for Bill Look and Bill. And he told a story. He said, you know, I, I was an atheist and I heard Oral Roberts was coming to town. He said, and so I went there because I knew he's a fake. He said, when I got there, the place was packed. I couldn't get anywhere near. So the next night I came real early. He said, I got up on the front row. He said, well, Oral Roberts, he sat in a chair and he'd be praying for people. You say, yeah, but that was Oral Roberts. No, no, that's for all of us. That power was not just for Oral Roberts. That's for all of us. I'm not saying you're an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, but we're given to help you move into that realm. And he said, all of a sudden, he said, I, I, I saw a woman go up with a garter about the size of a football. He said, okay, now, now I'll, I'll know he, he's, he's fake. He said, Oral Roberts reached out with tears running down his face and grabbed the gorder and it shrunk in his hands and it was gone. He go, he saw the power of God. An atheist, a professor. He said the next thing they brought a little child up whose legs were, were twisted like in a pretzel. And Oral Roberts took that little baby, his little child, in his lap and laid his hands and looked up to heaven and commanded those legs to straighten out. He says, I'm I heard this guy. He said, I'm telling you, I watched those legs untwist and became normal. And that little child took off running. He said, I got born again and filled the Holy Ghost. <laughs> we need the power of God. But we've been satisfied without it. I'm totally convinced all it takes is just for one person or two or three people to begin to step into that place where all things are possible. And then not to let those people think, yeah, I'm special. I'm anointed. I'm God's man of the hour. No, no, no. You're deceived. No, 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 no. Look at Stephen. They were, they were deacons, Stephen and Phil. Mighty signs. and It says that, that Stephen was full of faith and power. Say full of faith and power. You can be full of faith and power. But you, you, you got to realize we need it. We need it for this generation. We need it. We need it. I was thinking this morning as we're partaking in communion... And there's this us little group, and it's so wonderful. You better enjoy it while you can. Because the day's going to come when if you don't get here early, you're not getting a parking spot. 
But guess what we're going to do when it comes? We're not trying to hold on to it. We're going to send people out. We're going to teach people how to move in the glory, move in the power, move in the anointing, move in the, move in the reality of these things. Listen, Wigglesworth said, <clears throat> he tells us what happened to him before he could live and move in God's power and authority. He said this, before God could bring me to a place of power, he has broken me a thousand times. I have wept, I have groaned, I have travailed many a night until God broke me. See, he knew something. It was his flesh stopping. It, it was the blockage stopping God from moving in his life. It was him. It wasn't the devil. If God's power ain't moving in my life, it's, it's me. And, and unknowingly, innocently, it's me. I, I, I haven't had a revelation. I haven't died to self. I haven't. I have not been like Jesus who said at 12 years old, I must be about my father's business. We'll pick up with this tonight. He said, I have wept, I have grown, I have travailed many a night until God broke me. It seems to me that until God has mowed you down, you can never have this compassion and long-suffering for other people in, in their pains. We can never have the gifts of healing and the working of miracles flowing, operating continually, this divine power that God gives us until we basically get into a position where God can pour himself through us. God wants to pour himself through us. Every one of you have seen people healed, I'm sure. Most of you have prayed for people. How, how many of you have prayed for people and seen them healed? You know what? You were experiencing just a little drop in the ocean of God's power. But Jesus said this, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Get it out of your head that God doesn't want to use you. That's why God made you. God made you to be a vessel, a temple, a tabernacle. He said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now listen, I'm not talking about taking years and years and years and years of fasting and praying and meditating on God's word in order to experience the power. No, I experienced the power as a baby Christian. I'm telling you, I experienced the raw power of God. Hernias disappearing, demon possessed you know, TJ ate his fingers, drank blood, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Boom, just like that. Power of God shows up. Boom. You know what I was doing? All I wanted was Jesus. That's what it's going to cost you. All you want is Jesus. But why, Pastor Mike, to help people? to deliver people, to rescue people, to save people. Yes, our loved ones. We want our loved ones saved. We want our loved ones healed. We want our loved ones delivered. You know, Hannah, God, God not only does he want to manifest his healing in your body, and it's really nothing for him. Boom. Completely whole. But because he wants you to go out there and find people who are in the same condition you're in and get them healed. Like it's nothing. In all those years you've struggled, and you've believed, and you've trusted, and you'll be able to get them set free like it's nothing. Just boom. I'm not exaggerating. I, I, I'm pressing in. I said this year, Lord. This is the year. I'm not talking about at the end of the year now. I'm talking now. Now. Now's the time. Now's the moment. Now's the minute. It's right now. Will you close your eyes for a moment and lift your hands towards heaven? Make your hand like a funnel and say, God, pour it into me. Pour it through me. 
What would that power do, Pastor Mike? It'll set people free who have been taken captive by the devil. Their minds, their emotions, their hearts, they've been captive, taken captive by the devil. And all the books they can read and all the sermons they can hear ain't going to set them free. You know what's going to set them free? The power of God as you and I lay hands on them. The power of God will set them free. It's only the power of God. It's not your IQ, the color of your skin, your age, whether you're male or female. There is none of that in the body of Christ. We're all one in Christ. We need to move in the power of God. Pete, you move in that power when you go back to Africa. I saw you'll be like a flame of fire taking it through all the nations of Africa. All the nations. You're headed there. You're headed there. When does it happen, Pastor Mike? Listen to me. It can happen suddenly. That's what's happened to me many times. All of a sudden, suddenly God's power would begin to manifest in the meetings I was in. Suddenly, I never expected it. People would fall out of their chairs weeping, wailing, crying. I saw people being picked up and tossed like leaves in a whirlwind. Power of God. The power of God everywhere. The power of God. And all I was doing was seeking the face of Jesus. <laughs> Will you say this this year, this year. Right, now, right now, as a congregation, we will begin to step in and move in the power of God. Say this, thank you, Lord, for the little bit of power that we've already experienced. But it is nothing compared to what you're about to do in Jesus' name. We'll give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. This year, this year, right now, right now.